The brainchild of Roosevelt and Churchill, the United Nations, was established on 24th of October 1945 and succeeded the League of Nations. In 1945, the initial 51 UN member states' founding principles were to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors and to unite our strengths to maintain international peace and security and to ensure by the acceptance of principles and the institution of methods that armed force shall not be used save in the common interest and to employ international machinery for the promotion of the economical and social advancement of all peoples. Especially the phrases good neighbors, peace and security and common interest stand out prominently. Hello und Grüezi. Fast forward 2018. The world has changed beyond recognition and I am sorry to report that the UN has become a self-serving giant and additionally has been for decades quietly infiltrated by interest groups and NGOs. The latest proof for this claim is the in 2016 signed agreement between the International Organization for Migration or short IOM, and the UN. What is the purpose of the International Organization for Migration, IOM? Wiki quote. From its roots as an operational logistic agency, it has broadened its scope to become the leading international agency working with governments and civil society to advance the understanding of migration issues, encourage social and economic development through migration and uphold the human dignity and well-being of migrants. The broader scope of activities has been matched by rapid expansion from a relatively small agency into one with an annual operating budget of 1.3 billion US dollars and some 8,400 staff working in over 100 countries worldwide. The IOM has been officially elected by the UN as lead partner on migration. To make it clear why this is an extremely slippery slope the UN is on, let's look at the terms migrant and refugee defined by UN versus IOM. The basic definition of the term migrant according the UN reads, I quote, any person who lives temporarily or permanently in a country where he or she was not born and has acquired some significant social ties to this country. The basic definition for the term refugee according to the UN reads, I quote, a refugee is someone who has been forced to flee his or her country because of persecution, war or violence. This sounds pretty straightforward to me. Let's hear what the IOM came up with. The basic definition of the term migrant according IOM reads, I quote, any person who is moving or has moved across an international border or within a state away from his, her habitual place of residence, regardless of one, the person's legal status, two, whether the movement is voluntary or involuntary, three, what the causes for the movement are, or four, what the length of the stay is. IOM concerns itself with migrants and migrant-related issues and, in agreement with relevant states, with migrants who are in need of international migration services. The basic definition of the term refugee according IOM reads, I quote, a person who, owning to a well-founded fear 
of persecution for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group or political opinions, is outside the country of his nationality and is unable or, owing to such fear, is unwilling to avail himself of the protection of that country. It is important to recognize that the UN's definition is based on clear factual statements, whereby the IOM definition is rather based on choices and subjective feelings. IOM is producing every year hundreds of migration promotion videos and is very active on social media platforms like Twitter and YouTube. One film festival across five continents in over 100 countries featuring 300 screenings from movie theaters to transit centers. People from around the world have come to see stories about the promises and challenges of migration. The Global Migration Film Festival. Join us next year to witness more stories of a world that is constantly on the move. It has turned into a colossal migration propaganda machine. In my Easter video, I have published IOM's shocking promotion video, 244 million are on the move, showcasing the alleged incredible benefits of migration, stating that migration is unavoidable and desired. Please watch for yourself. My question was where these numbers were coming from. One full day of research has answered that question and additionally brought very disturbing facts to light. Please bear with me. In the year 2000, the UN had published a strategy paper called the UN Global Compact. It is a strategic policy initiative for businesses that are committed to aligning their operations and strategies with 10 universally accepted principles in the areas of human rights, labor, environment and anti-corruption. According to UN, by doing so, business as a primary agent driving globalization can help ensure that markets commerce, technology and finance advance in ways that benefit economies and societies everywhere. Three financial crashes, a struggling middle class, western societal decline and the migration crisis of epic proportion later. Congratulations UN! We have to ask ourselves what on earth has happened? Quietly, guided by its affiliated lobby and interest groups, the UN has worked tirelessly towards a vision of a future world, which has not much in common anymore with the UN's founding principles of good neighbors, peace and security and common interest. Instead, what we find ourselves confronted with is a globalized world with globalized peoples and globalized businesses, promoted and advertised 
by our Western liberal governments, which are taking advice from and are inspired by the UN and its self-serving NGOs and their cronies. Nation states, patriotism, roots, traditional families and Christianity have no place in the utopian plans of a new globalized world order. Does this sound like a conspiracy theory? I'm afraid it's not. Since the year 2000, the UN had published eight major strategy papers, tweaking all along its broad UN Global Compact strategic policy with the help of NGOs and said IOM, into an overarching, ever more refugee-focused agenda. All of this has been published on the UN web portal and certainly the heads of the 193 UN member states were in the loop. Yet the people, the ordinary citizens, have no clue and were deliberately left in the dark about this development. Not surprising, I can't remember having seen the mainstream media ever reporting on this in depth. Proof of all this can be found in the UN resolutions and General Assembly protocols partially ratified by its member states between 2000 and 2017. In 2013, two full years before the European migrant crisis, the UN 68-4 declaration of the high-level dialogue on international migration and development predicted the following. Number one recognize that international migration is a multidimensional reality of major relevance for the development of countries of origin, transit and destination. Number two, migration should be addressed in a coherent, comprehensive and balanced manner. Unbelievably, the UN predictions of 2013 became reality in 2015, with Merkel having the honor of pressing the start button. Swiftly, the UN followed with its masterpiece resolution with the title, I am not making this up now, Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development UN Resolution 70-1, wherein the context and tone changed significantly. Number one, we also recognize that international migration is a multidimensional reality of major relevance for the development of countries of origin, transit and destination, which requires coherent and comprehensive responses. We will cooperate internationally to ensure safe, orderly and regular migration involving full respect for human rights and the human treatment of migrants regardless of migration status, of refugees and of displaced persons. In 2016, the next resolution prepared the member states of course hardly reported to the public, for large movements of migrants. Then the International Organization for Migration, IOM, with its operating budget of 1.3 billion US dollar, got officially integrated into UN family. But this was still not enough to handle the migration crisis which was spiraling out of control. The famous New York Declaration for Refugees and Migrants had to be proposed additionally. Again, the tone changed and the member states were now presented with hard facts. Number one, we are witnessing in today's world an unprecedented level of human mobility. More people than ever before live in a country other than the one in which they were born. Migrants are present in all countries in the world. Number two, in 2015, their number surpassed 244 million. That's exactly where the figures for the intro video came from. Growing at a rate faster than the world's population, however, 
there are roughly 65 million forcibly displaced persons, including over 21 million refugees, 3 million asylum seekers, and over 40 million internally displaced persons. Number three, in adopting the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development one year ago, we recognized clearly the positive contribution made by migrants for inclusive growth and sustainable development. Our world is a better place for that contribution. The benefits and opportunities of safe, orderly and regular migration are substantial and are often underestimated. Let that sink in. In 2017, President Trump said stop to the New York Declaration negotiations. The US in December 2017 withdrew from negotiations for the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration in short called GCM, saying that the 2016 New York Declaration establishing the GCM process includes, I quote, numerous provisions that are inconsistent with US immigration and refugee policies and the Trump administration's immigration principles, end of quote. Everything had become a farce. The UN, guided by NGOs and IOM, merely reacted with continuously issued strategy papers on the migration tsunami unleashed by its own wrongdoing. The lid of the Pandora's box couldn't be closed anymore. Yet again, the public was held in the dark and instead continuously fed with pro-migration narrative set by the UN and its affiliates. That's why the IOM comes in so handy. The infamous Mr. George Soros must have jumped off joy. Okay, so far so good. The world had gone mad and one of the driving forces behind this madness can be identified with the year 2000 UN Global Compact Strategy, short Total Globalization Strategy gone very wrong. The intention of initially intelligently managed migration had changed into accepting and embracing the unavoidable reality of large-scale migration into the Western world. But wait a moment, there is more. By 1st of January 2017, the ineffective UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon got replaced by Antonio Guterres. Of course he had to enter office with a big bang. Presto, his Making Migration Work for All report did exactly that. In his masterpiece report, Guterres urges the UN member states to prepare the grounds for future implementation of his new migration policies and work towards its adoption in the General Assembly meeting, which will be held by the end of 2018. If ratified, the far-reaching implications will affect, change and shake our Western societies on every level and to the core. The UN, together with its love child, the International Organization for Migration, IOM, is determined to play the leading role in controlling and guiding the never-ending migration flow. There is no attempt anymore to create better living conditions in the migrants' countries of origin and eventually prevent them leaving. We all should just accept the unavoidable fate of the Western civilization. We shall accept and embrace it. The wording and focus has completely changed away from true refugees towards the all-encompassing fluffy term migrants. Guterres is not shy explicitly addressing his intention to let migrants move freely with the intention to reduce economic disparities between countries. 
He identifies national borders as an obstacle in the migration process and suggests to allow migrants to flow freely. Regards from George Soros. Countries with existing hard borders shall be in possible violation of basic human rights. Let that sink in. He urges governments to set high standards regarding desired choice of words and phrases in the context of any migration discussion. And finally, Guterres makes the following statements, I quote, Integration and naturalization shall be the way to deal with this. According to Teres, following benefits shall outweigh any short-term negative impact. Number one, migrants offer expertise and entrepreneurship that benefit their host societies. Number two, financially, migrants, including irregular migrants, illegal migrants, contribute by paying taxes and injecting around 85% of their earnings into the economies of host societies. Number three, migrants who are more likely to be of working age than the general population generally contribute more in taxes than the cost of the services that they receive in return from host states. End of quote. I didn't make that up. This is word by word what Guterres wrote in his report. Russia, USA and China, together with the Weisskraut Group, the alliance of Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland and Slovakia, will most certainly refuse to sign up for such a ruthless attempt to dissolve the sovereignty of nation-states and shape the future according to the UN and any liberal government's utopian dreams. Though self-righteous and guilt-driven politicians from Germany and Switzerland and many other countries might just sign up for it anyway. Oh, I forgot to mention, the headquarter of the International Organization for Migration, IOM, and a main United Nations office is situated in Geneva, Switzerland. A multi-billion dollar industry gone rogue. This is the reason why it's absolutely vital that the public is made aware of what is happening behind the smokescreen of daily politics and start a public debate about the UN and its underreported plans and intentions. Otherwise, the Western world will serve free for all breakfast, lunch and dinner for a very long time to come. If you found this video interesting, please give a thumbs up. If you would like to watch future videos with similar content, please consider subscribing to my channel together with pressing the notification bell. Thank you for watching and stay well.